you've got a T5 or a T6 that does this. Nothing, 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 maximum. <laughs> the likelihood is it's one of these that you need to replace. And that's located down in the passenger footwell. I'll show you how to get it out and I'll show you how to get a replacement in place. So in the passenger footwell of your T6, behind this little plastic trim is this resistor matrix. Carefully pop that plastic trim out with your hand. So carefully pull those three poppers down and then pull that trim towards you, at which point you will then reveal the location of this resistor matrix. And the resistor matrix is located just here. Now what we need to do is get our spanner and undo this resistor matrix so that we can remove it. There's also a cable on the back of it that we need to remove with our fingers as well. You'll need a 5.5 millimeter socket. It's a bit of a fiddly space. It's such a tight space <laughs> that in the end, I actually found it easier to use a standard spanner because it's just a little bit thinner and there's the old one bearing in mind this van is only three years old it does look a little bit rusty and mucky it's quite a fiddly job but it takes about 10 or 15 minutes right let's test it all right fingers crossed ignition's on oh yes three four Happy days, everything's back up and running. So we've got the van fixed, that's the important thing. The next question on everybody's mind, certainly on my mind, is what has failed in this to cause everything to stop working? And I've tracked it down, it's the thermal fuse here up on top. But ultimately this is just a resistor pack that sits in front of the fan and when you turn the fan on, it adds an extra coil of wire in front of the motor of the fan in order to slow the motor down in the fan. This is a 192 degree thermal fuse. What we have in here is a ceramic core, which hopefully you can see there, the white ceramic core. And then we have uh, some electrodes running up through that white ceramic core. And we have some coils of wire. You can faintly see there a coil of wire. There'll be resistance wire running around, then probably a layer of something like captain tape and what looks like yet a second coil of wire running around that ceramic center. And then everything is coated in, in more ceramic paint. The idea of the fuse here, it connects on the left hand pin and the right hand pin, the two outside pins. And the idea of this fuse is if something goes horribly wrong, everything gets too hot, then this fuse blows and ultimately stops this resistor pack from setting itself on fire. Now, let's have a quick look and see what we have got going on here. So hopefully you can see the screen and I'm just going red and black here on the two outside pins. And we're in the range of mega ohms there. Mega ohms, mega ohms, mega ohms. That, through that fuse, should be a direct short. But unfortunately, this fuse, and I'll just confirm it for you at the top. I'm just doing exactly the same that I was just now, but in the region of 1.4 mega ohms. So this fuse has blown. Right, okay, what do you do when a fuse blows? <laughs> short it out. So let's go ahead and short that fuse out. There we go. Now, let's check this. So we'll go in here and we can see the uh, meter changing scale and we're now at 1.2 ohms. If I go to the second pin in, we can see there we're at 2.4 ohms. So quite clearly that fuse, and then if we connect this guy to this guy here, we should see something in the region of zero ohms, 0.2 of an ohm. So there we go, that pretty much proves it. Um, the problem, of course, that we face, if we decide we want to replace this fuse, because you can buy 192 
degrees centigrade thermal fuses on the internet. If we decide we want to replace that fuse, we can have a go at doing that. The problem is, if we were to solder it in place, the likelihood is, is it would blow the fuse immediately. So <laughs> this fuse here looks like it's been welded in place. Um, electro clamp welded, just high current quick and that keeps all the heat away from the fuse when you do that so yeah this is unfortunately cream crackered but that is the culprit right there everything else looks absolutely fine on here i can't see any problems with the resistor windings or any burn marks on it or anything bubbling up and causing problems it's that fuse that has blown uh, and I would say they've probably set that fuse to be just a little too sensitive. Anyway, nice to know what it is that's causing our problem. And it's also great to understand a little bit more about these bits and pieces that are in our vehicles. Right, there we go. That's the fuses and the heater bits and pieces all sorted in the van. Next thing I wanted to do was just offer a quick apology out to everybody that watches. More specifically, um, those patrons... Thank you very much for being a patron. I hope you had a marvellous Christmas. Um, we've had a few little issues around here. We needed to get a little bit of downtime. Um, nothing too serious. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to go into the details at the moment, but yeah, we, um, we've, we, we needed a little bit of downtime uh, to get life sorted out, to get life on track. So thanks ever so much for your patience and sticking with us. Really appreciate it. I hope you've had a fabulous, fabulous Christmas and I hope you've had a lovely Christmas break. I hope, you've ha I hope you're going to have an absolutely fabulous new year and we'll see you again in the new year. I've got lots of projects coming up. One is, <laughs> one is the repair of a ZX Spectrum. I've got a couple of project reviews that I need to do. Uh, one is uh, a battery charger by Xtar and uh, another set of headphones. So lots lots and lots of stuff to come up. Um, I've got a BBC Micro to repair as well. Loads of sort of retro stuff that we're gonna get into uh, and, um, and, and a few other projects as well going forwards. Thanks ever so much for watching. As always, have a fabulous, fabulous week and weekend and we'll see you in the next video. Take care people, bye for now.